One of the really great tools in Minitab that I sometimes overlook for calculating binomial probabilities is the binomial distribution plot. It's really great for getting a visual of your probabilities and it's a lot faster, at least I think so, than using the calc function. So it comes in really handy when you need to calculate your binomial probabilities. Um, it's especially useful when you need probabilities between two values. So I'm going to show you how to use this tool and you can decide whether you like this tool better or the calc function. So let's take a look at how to do this. For our example, let's use the question that 34% of college students say they carry a store bonus card for the discount program, that that's their motivation. If we randomly select 10 students and ask them the reason for signing up for the bonus card, what's the probability that exactly two say it's for the discount, more than two say it's for the discount, and between two and five inclusive say it's for the discount? Now that word inclusive means that two is included in our probability and 5 is included in our probability. Let's take a look at how we can do that in Minitab. So let's look at Part A where it asks us what's the probability that exactly to say that they chose the rewards card for the um, rewards that they get or the discounts. To set that up in symbolic form we say that the probability of X is equal to 2. Now instead of going into the calc function and then into binomial probability, in order to use a binomial distribution plot, we're going to go into the graph function of Minitab, and then we're going to look at the probability distribution plots. So let's take a look at how we do that specifically in Minitab. This time instead of going to calc, we're going to go to graph, and we're going to go straight to probability distribution plot and we're going to select View Probability. We're going to let Minitab generate um, the probability under this curve for us, and we're going to look at just what we want to look at. Now, once we're under probability distribution, we need to tell uh, Minitab that we're actually looking at binomial probability. So we need to go to this drop-down box, and we need to look at all the different ones that Minitab can calculate for us. We need to select binomial, and that's very important or we're going to get some um, crazy numbers that we're not interested in. So let's make sure we select binomial, and then we can give Minitab our information. So in this problem, we said that the number of trials we were going to do were 10 because we're selecting 10 students, and our event probability was 34%, so we're going to enter in 0.34. Now we need to go over and click on the shaded area tab. We are interested in x values and our x value in this problem is what is the probability that x is exactly 2. So we're going to enter in the exact value of 2. Now we can select any one of these charts to look at or these curves in this particular case. Now in the other situations we're going to have to um, specify which one of the curves, but in this case we can choose either right tail, left tail, both tails, or middle and get our information from any of those curves because what we're looking for in this case will be available. And click OK and there it is. Now this 0 0.9035 is not your answer, so please do not just see that value and write it down. That is another value that you do not need to pay attention to right now. What you are interested in is your value at x equal to 2. And watch what happens when I hover my cursor over the x equal to 2 bar. A window pops up and it tells me that the probability at x equal to 2 is 0 0.187. And that is my probability of exactly 2. 0 0.187. Now, if I wanted to know um, the probability of x equal to 1, I would go hover over the 1 bar, and that is 0 0.0807. If I wanted to know exactly 0, I could hover over the 0 bar. So likewise at x equal to 4 or x equal to 5. So what I have here is um, I've generated a histogram of my binomial distribution. Each one of these bars are indicating the individual probability at each individual value. Each one that's shaded is what is given 
in this cumulative value right here. So if you were to hover over each one of these bars and write down the area that was given of that bar or the probability of that bar and sum those up in your calculator, you would get that 0 0.9035. Now, if you want to copy down the steps for using the distribution plot in Minitab, here they are right here. I've listed them out for you. For those of you that are in my class, you have a guide sheet with those printed up, so I recommend that you keep those handy. So let's take a look at Part B. So to calculate the probability of selecting more than two students, let's again go to Graph and Probability Distribution Plot, and we're going to select View Probability, click OK. We've told the dis that Minitab that we want the binomial distribution. Our number of trials is still 10 and our event probability is still 34%. We need to go to the Shaded Area tab and we've selected X value. Now this time we're interested in more than two. So we want to select left tail, or actually right tail, I'm sorry, because we want a value greater than a number. So we want to go to the right but we want a value greater than 2 and we don't want to include 2 so we want th we want to start at 3 for our probability because we want values greater than 2 but we don't want to include 2 if we put 2 in as our x value then that means minitab would include 2 in our calculation but we don't want to include 2 we want 2 just to be our boundary line but not be included so we want the values greater than 2, so we want to start with 3. So then we enter in 3 and we click OK. And notice that Minitab shades in the distribution plot from 3 forward. Now we can pay attention to this number that pops up immediately. That number that pops up is the cumulative value or the amount that is shaded. The amount that is shaded, the probability, which is the amount greater than 2 or 3 and forward up to 10 is 0 0.7162 and that is the probability of selecting more than two students. Again, it's the sum of each of these shaded bars. So if you were to hover over each bar and get each individual probability and add them up, it would total to 0 0.7162, but Minitab has already done that uh, summation for you and given it to you. So greater than 2 would be 3 and forward. So now let's calculate the probability of between two values using this distribution plot. When we want to know the area in that plot between two values, we're going to use a different one of the curves, the one that specifies in the middle, because in this case we want to know the probability that we would select more than 2 but less than 5. So we want to be between these two values but we want to include these two values. We want to include the probability of 2 and we want to include the probability of 5. So let's see how to do that in Minitab. Finding the probability between two values is where using a distribution plot really comes in handy as opposed to using the calc function. So let's see how to find the probability between 2 and 5 inclusive using the distribution plot. So let, again, let's go under graph, probability distribution plot, and view probability. Now remember I had told you previously that you could just go right here and reopen your previous dialog box, but it doesn't hurt to continue to go back using the same path again. So click OK and that opens up our dialog box. We still have number of trials as 10, event probability as 
click on Shaded Area, and here's where we're going to tell Minitab again what we're specifically interested in. We're interested in X values, but this time we're interested in the area between two X values. We're interested in the value in between in the middle. So we want to look at the middle plot. Notice that when we select middle, our options for entering in an X value change down here. It asks us for two values. That's because it's going to tell us the area between two values. So it wants to know the left boundary and the right boundary. And it's going to include the probability at those boundaries because we are asked for inclusive. It's asking for or equal to those boundaries. So our left boundary was two students and our right boundary was five students. Once you enter in those boundaries, you just click OK. And Minitab produces your distribution chart with those areas shaded. And notice that it included the two and the five in the shaded areas. And it tells you the probability of that region, which is 0 0.8199. So if we were to add up each of these individual probabilities, it would equal 0 0.8199. But the probability of this area inclusive between 2 and 5 is 0 0.8199. not included, you would need to adjust your boundary points. So if we needed greater than 2, this boundary should be made to be 3. If we needed less than 5, this boundary should be made to be 4, so that you could adjust. So you need to tell Minitab where you need the boundaries to start or stop, and that is up to you to make those adjustments. In order to help you make those adjustments, I did draw up a chart tell you which curves to choose and where to set your X values. So if you take a look at this chart, it may help you in setting up your boundaries and choosing the correct curve. So when you're setting up a plot in Minitab, if you are choosing an exact value, then you enter the exact number of interest. If you're going less than a number, you're going to want the left tail. If you're wanting less than or equal to, you're also going to want the left tail. The only time you need to change your number of interest is when you're just less than or greater than, in which case if you're less than, you need to subtract one value. If you're greater than, you need to add a value. I hope this helps you use the distribution plot. Um, I really like this method, actually better than the calc method, but you may not. It's up to you. I hope it helps make your homework in stats class a little bit easier.